Um, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for having me here. Thank you for the work that you do. Um, thank you for uh, being an inspiring group of people and very organized and very talented group of people because uh, we appreciate the, the work that you do over in very far places across the world. Thank you. Um, my name is Felipe Alvarez, as, as uh, I was presented before. I work for an organization based in Santiago called Ciudadano Inteligente. Um, if there's any Spanish words that you don't understand or I pronounce it very fast, you could, uh, could you please tell me? Because um, probably it's, it's in Spanish, uh, I think. Um, Ciudadano Inteligente is a smart citizen foundation, basically. Um, today, I'm going to talk about two things. Um, one is a research that we did a couple of years ago, and the second one is an idea based on this, um, based on this research that we have. All right. Um, who is Ciudadano Inteligente? Ciudadano Inteligente is an NGO based in Santiago. Our main goal is to uh, bridge the gap between the powerless and the powerful through the use of technology. Um, we are a group of about 15 people, and we have a dog as well. Um, uh, yes, uh, OK. So Latin America, in general, is a, is a, um, it's a place where the social divide between the powerless and the powerful, meaning that um, the people who has money and the people who does not, is very big, all right? Um, and, that, um, and that also provides this uh, kind of problems, like, for example, the relationship between money and politics in Latin America, which you can find it pretty much everywhere. Um, and that leads to um, us citizens to believe that our politicians are corrupt. Um, and, but in that place, we get the impression that technology um, plus advocacy can generate a change in our society. Um, now I'm going to talk to, about the, the study or the research. Um, what we did, this was back in 2011, uh, what we did was a research uh, through uh, our congressman's um, assets. Basically, we looked through what they had, the things that they have declared, even the things that they didn't have to declare. But in Chile, um, there's a law that says that every congressman has to declare um, their assets. But it's, there's no one really checking if that is true or not. So some politicians, they just tell that they have these things, but they might have some other things, all right? They might have some other more. Um, also, we checked, we did some research on um, how these congressmen uh, participated in Congress, um, how they voted on bills, if they voted... Um, or if they um, didn't vote and they said, I have possibly a conflict of interest uh, regarding my assets. Um, after that, what we did was um, create a match saying there is a possible conflict of interest um, because one politician could have an asset and vote in a certain way that um, was uh, creating a conflict of interest. But that was just a possible conflict of interest. So here we see, um, for example, a law, a, a bill, that was voted by this, this um, congressman and um, that shouldn't have voted, basically. Um, you can see the application running um, on this website, which I'm going to show you. I want to stress that this is just um, a research. It isn't an application running on a any like open source, uh, open data or anything, okay? Here we go. And we can see, for example, um, uh, for example, I'm gonna check on this guy, the first one. Uh, he says he's got um, financial, um, possible 
areas of interest, um, health and um, housing. And then we check if he has any conflict of interest regarding those areas. Okay. And he actually um, was author in, in a bill. Okay. I'm going to get back to the presentation. Let me see. Okay. Once I show the application. Um, the impact that this research had on public media was that some of our politicians took these in the right way and they updated their um, declaration of assets. And they said, yes, what you say is right, so we are going to declare these things and I'm not going to vote in certain bills because I've got a conflict of interest. Um, but also the most interesting one was that we almost, almost got sued by one of the parties that said that our research wasn't good enough. Um, and that was very interesting. Nothing happened at the end. They didn't take any legal actions because they didn't have any um, concrete um, leads to create any, any legal actions. Um, but also, it created some um, internal impact in our organization, meaning that um, we created some other campaigns that um, because, it, because we didn't do these kind of things before. So we created, for example, we pushed a campaign to create a lobby law that we just had um, last year passed. And we also created a regulation for that same lobby law. We helped push a regulation for that lobby law. Um, and also, um, in Chile, you don't have to tell when you're a politician and you go and you run for a campaign, you don't have to tell who finances, who, who gave you money for financing your campaign. So um, we also created a campaign uh, asking our politicians who is financing them, who's giving them money. So, so we could have an idea how are they going to behave once they are in, 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 um, in a power position. So uh, that's uh, the things that it triggered in our organization itself. Um, is this the end? Um, I wouldn't be asking that if the answer wasn't no. Of course, it, the answer is no. Um, and here's the second part of my presentation. I want to um, present what is the future of um, our interest in SPECTRE um, uh, for now. Um, we want to create a simpler but extensible application that works in different contexts especially in Latin America. Um, we want to engage with other uh, Latin American NGOs and investigative journalist groups. Um, how is it going to work? Um, here's a basic idea. We want to uh, create a, like the concept of loose end and action. A politician could have a loose end, meaning something that could be, um, could create a possible conflict of interest. For example, owning a mining company. And um, an action could be like voting in a mining bill. Um, a loose end could also be um, being friend or close friend of someone. And if that triggers um, possible um, conflict of interest. And by possible conflict of interest, I mean um, it is not a certain thing, but um, that it requires further investigation. So it's a tool for researching co conflicts of interest, not for um, telling the public that it, it is a real conflict of interest. Um, now I have a question. Does this make sense in your context? Um, does anyone have any idea if this is, because this is an idea and I just want to test the idea before creating any software or any, um, any work basically. What do you, what do you think? Um, does it, does it make sense or, oh, you, you might had an idea. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, um, I work at the Sunlight Foundation, an American NGO that's very similar to uh, Cidadane. 
um, and I'm actually going to talk a little bit more about that later, but um, we have a tool called Influence Explorer that does Pretty a number work. of these things. Um, we uh, we present the data a little bit differently, allow people to draw their own conclusions, but I, I think that it, it definitely works along the same lines, and, and the data in the United States is, is there, so it definitely exists, and, and it's a power, very powerful tool, so I, I think that it could definitely be brought to your context, that yeah. kind of thing. So that would save me a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> so that's very helpful. All right. Um, and um, now I'm reaching to the end of my presentation. Um, do you have any questions? Um, I don't know. Um, um, how do you collect the data? Uh, um, like, like the, the the where the money goes to each okay. congressman, and how do you make sure the data is correct? Okay. Um, our idea currently isn't to be like collecting data using um, aut automatic mechanisms. We want to uh, collect ma data in the way that we find it. So maybe it could, we could create like scrapers, but also we could create um, manual. We could collect the, the um, data manually because in a lot of countries in Latin America, you don't have that um, public open data. Basically, they we have a lot of um, activists that, that go straight to to their congress and they write how uh, their congressmen vote. They they do it, the thing manually. So we want to have both options, or any option that could, could be helpful, basically. So th did, it, did it answer your question? Or? OK, thank you. Mm. Okay. See you. So, um, I would assume conf conflict of interest would be like you own something and then you try to pass a bill that's in favor of that sector or something like that? Yeah, something like that. So um, how do you map the bills being passed or being discussed into sectors? Um, or do you do that manually? Have volunteers to do that oh. or any experts to do oh. that? Okay, good question. Um, what we did last time, I'm sorry I missed that part. I think it's a very important one. Um, what we did last time was um, cre we created a category for a bill. Also, we created a category for the assets or the loose ends. We just matched them. Like, um, is this is this the same category? For example, health and uh, health, and then it is a possible conflict of interest. But um, I think we have to think of that application in the way that it is extensible enough. So um, there could be another ways of um, creating that that much, or because um, if you think of it, like you could create like very complex algorithms, researching through the bills and doing some like um, how do you call it, artificial intelligence uh, research and stuff like that. But um, I, I, basically, what we want to do is create a category and, and both sides, but leave it open for someone else to create a new way of uh, doing too much. Did it answer? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was pretty sure. Okay. Thank you. Uh, is there any question or comments to the missed miss others? Further? Any questions? Now, in Taiwan, we do have uh, regulations to regulate congressmen's uh, asset for money. They always we, uh, uh, have, have to uh, uh, register. Yeah, and also G zero B G zero B promote a lot of uh, people to work on that. 